Hello everyone, this is Hillbilly Heath on a beautiful Sunday morning here in the bluegrass. I uh, thought this would be a good time to do a little knife review. Got a cup of coffee and a couple beautiful knives in front of me and thought I'd share them with everyone out there today. Uh, I had a viewer kind of mention, you know, they wanted to see more GEC knives and that's actually something I've been considering. Uh, you know, kind of showing off some of my knives and, and maybe uh, letting letting you guys see them and uh, maybe help you decide if you wanted to purchase one of these great knives from Great Eastern Cutlery. Um, I know sometimes uh, just from pictures it's hard to tell a lot about these knives and get a little more info from video. So I thought I'd uh, share it with you get this nice hot cup of joe out of the way ah good stuff <clears throat> uh, up here at the top you'll see one of the reasons why I've got kind of gotten back into these traditional knives this was my grandfather's old timer uh, he, he passed away several years ago but uh, there was an old uh, outbuilding, little storage building in behind his house. And uh, it sat there after he passed away and uh, without any type of repairs to it in a long time. And it, it started, the roof started coming off and uh, it, it got in bad shape. So, so we decided to tear it down, get rid of it. Well, as we was uh, tearing this down, I found this knife. So this knife had set out in that building under the weather for oh, 10 years maybe. I mean it's in really bad shape. I might, you know, I put, tried to put a little oil on it and maybe I'll do a restoration of it one of these days but I mean all the blades are there but they're they're pretty rough shape. But uh, <clears throat> When I found this knife, it kind of hit a heartstring, you know, because um, I've always been into the more modern folders with the super steels and locking mechanisms and pocket clips. And uh, but when I found this, I was like, you know, I think I think I need to get back back to my roots, <laughs> so to say. Uh, and you know, it seemed. Uh, several videos and uh, people in the forums talk about Great Eastern Cutlery. I wasn't too familiar with them. Of course, they didn't start till 2006. But uh, you know, I was brought up on the knives like like the old timer or in case and and those type of knives. And you know, I was very familiar with those brands, but uh, really wasn't too familiar with these. Uh, not too long ago, a few months ago, I guess, I walked into uh, a local store, local uh, cutlery shop that had just opened about five miles from me, and they had great eastern cutlery knives there. And at the time, I didn't realize how lucky I was to, to live that close to a place that deals in great eastern cutlery knives because they're kind of few and far between. Because uh, you know these knives are kind of hard to get a hold of, uh, but uh, you know I went through several of them and, and I just kind of fell in love with them right off the bat after handling a few of them, and uh, you know I've been kind of collecting them ever since. So I thought I'd do some videos on the ones I do have, and uh, start out with the the lowest number I have, which is 13, and I've got two number 13s. I kind of showed this one a little bit in the last video. This is the uh, 13 uh, American Whittler in deep chestnut jig bone. There's the number. Here's the tube it comes in. And this was a, a special factory order from Roy Humanic of AmericanWhittler.com. And the other one I have is the uh, sp uh, speaker jack I believe is what this one's called uh, 
both of these came out last year. Uh, both of these are in Northfield trim. And uh, the speaker jack there is in Gabon Ebony, as you can see. But uh, both of these appealed to me for a, a few different reasons. Uh, I really like the Northfield trim that uh, Great Eastern Cutlery does uh, for collector's knives, for knives I'm planning on keeping. As you can see, they got both got the triple line bolsters. Uh, they got the mirror polish on the blades, and uh, they're just more fancy, I guess. Uh, but the main reason I like these, some of you already know, is the sheep's foot blades they put on them. Now this one's more of a jackknife. You get uh, both blades come out one end. I'm trying to show this off. Got you a nice swedge up here, and I've got fingerprints all over. That's the thing about these mirror polishes on these blades, they just attract the fingerprints. And I'll try to keep it wiped off, but it's gonna be hard to do. And this one has a half stop, nice little snap, and they got a little groove cut out for your secondary pin blade there. And it also has a half stop. But, uh, like I said, I like this design because of the sheep's foot blade, but uh, for what I do, most of my cutting seems to be draw cuts, and, and that humpback design is really comfortable in that draw cut. You know, not that I'd ever probably use these for, for that, but uh, it's just something that appeals to me. But these Great Eastern Cutlery knives are, are made very, very well. You can see no gaps. The transitions are all really, really nice and smooth. I like that shield on that. Kind of a light pull, probably a five. Snaps pretty good. Walk and talk is good as you can here and uh, this was the first one I purchased and, and the, like I said the main reason was that long sheep's foot blade it just caught my eye and I'd always been wanting a Whittler knife split back Whittler and uh, I saw this one with also a sheep's foot blade uh, you know it was an obvious choice uh, interesting thing about this one, there's no half stop on the main blade. It does have a nice snap, but on your two secondary pin blades, as you can see, there is a half stop. I thought that was kind of interesting. And they both snap very well. And uh, the reason I wanted this Whittler, the design and the everything that goes in to making this knife just kind of amazed me. As you can see, your main blade runs on two springs. You got your two springs here for your pin blades and you got your liner or not liner but your wedge down through the middle that splits these two springs terminates and then goes in to one spring that your main blade runs on you can see both springs come up when I open up that blade And then you open up your pin blade, and just one comes up. That design just amazes me. 
all the fabrication and everything that goes into this it's just really amazing And the jigging on this is great, it's beautiful. The shield, I like that shield too. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, but like I said, these came out last year and uh, there was, I believe three, three models they did. Um, the clerk, which I believe it, has, it was like a, a bone and had some like scrimshaw writing on it. it said office knife and then the the speaker jack here and there was a couple models of it and uh oh, what was the third one the whip i believe and it had like a, a warren cliff blade so i kind of like that one too but uh, these are the two offerings i got uh, but just beautiful beautiful knives and one of the reasons why i like Great Eastern Cutlery as much as I do. I'll let you guys get a little closer look at that one. The jigging. There goes my smudges again. Uh, like I said, damn near impossible to keep the fingerprints off those mirror polishes. That's why I prefer a, a satin finish on my work knives because seeing those fingerprints all day would drive me nuts. Uh, this is a great design for, I mean, for a Whittler knife uh, for the draw cuts and everything. I want you to look how close those blades are in there. And that skinny, small frame, they got those three blades, and that's just kind of amazing to me. But these are the first two GECs that I have I want to show you guys, and uh, if you'd like to see more, which I'll probably put a few more out anyway, but uh, uh, like and comment. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram if you want to see some pictures, other pictures of these knives. Uh, everyone have a great day, and I'll see you next time.